You mad. Skullduggery. You mad. Doing the math. Doing the math. I don't know. So I don't know how these points work out. I don't know about tiebreakers and technicalities. I don't give a fuck. The bullshit continues. You mad. This is Strong Honor, where we talk about New Japan and Ring of Honor Pro Wrestling. My name's Tommy Stryker. Over there is Taco. What up? And yeah, we got a lot to talk about. We are nearing the end of the G1 Climax. Nah, shit. And uh, and we are so mad. You mad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, having, having a good time. It's been a great G1 Climax so far. We got uh, two nights of block action left, and then the finals are on Sunday, I believe. Yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So big weekend coming up for the G1. How have you been enjoying it uh, so far, Taco? Oh, it's been a fucking blast. It's the best way to start my morning. It's like yeah. I couldn't have asked for anything better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, 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 great content every other day. Fun matches. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of skullduggery this year between Jay White and the uh, the firing squad. But uh, we'll obviously get into all of that here as we go along. So we'll talk about the last uh, four or five days of uh, I think four days of four days of uh, of uh, G1 stuff here to talk about. So we'll talk about the matches and uh, the standings, where things are at. And there's really only a chance for a couple, three guys. Actually, I think there's three guys in each block that have a chance to uh, make it to the finals now. So we'll get into that. We'll talk a little bit about our predictions. We got an updated uh, all-in card to get into, as well as uh, Ring of Honor TV this week. Ring of Honor, uh, starting next week, is going to be back on the road, uh, doing uh, going back over to the UK, doing the Honor Reunited shows uh, over there starting next weekend. So it doesn't slow down even though the G1 is over, Taco. Fuck no, and we ain't going to slow down either. Nah, 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 and we ain't mad about that. You mad. Well, maybe somebody, be, somebody might be mad. About I actually that. had to go back and watch that fucking interview again with him because, <laughs> God, it's so good. Yeah, you know, that's the other thing that's been really nice about the G1 this year is the uh, those backstage comments. They've been uh, pretty good at posting those up pretty quickly. They don't have uh, the... Rapido. Yeah, we, they don't have the ones for the for uh, last night's show up yet. We're recording this on uh, on Wednesday here, the... Uh, what is today? The the eighth? Yeah, Wednesday the eighth. So they don't have the the ones for today's. It's barely been out for twelve hours. Right, right. But I mean, for a lot, all of the other ones, like you know, it'll air you know late night, you know, here in the states live, and then by the time I get home from work the mm-hmm. next day and watch it that night, they've got the they got the show up there with the sure. with the post match comments with subtitles and everything. So they've been really good about getting those up there, and it's really. Uh, uh, watching those has really uh, kind of accentuated uh, everything. You know, it, it, it's you know, it's not all about the matches. It's about what the guys are t- saying in the back. Mm-hmm. And you know, Juice Robinson has just been you know killing it uh, on those backstage segments. But Kenny Omega is good as well. You know, and, and seeing the translated Japanese, of, of course, always helps with you know what the guys' mindsets or what the stories are supposed to be. Mm-hmm. You know, going into the matches, so that always helps too. Uh, and then also, you know. I, I wanted to mention this too, like because we we, uh, we we talk about uh, kind of skipping the undercards or kind of skimming through them or not, you know, uh, kind of fast forwarding through them or, or whatever uh, here and there. But if you're newer to uh, New Japan, I would suggest uh, watching as much of the undercards as you can. Oh hell yeah! Certainly, uh, at least the finishers, uh, because then you get an idea of what guys' finishing sequences are like, or what you know their signature offense. Because like so much uh, of what we're going to talk about when we get into, into the matches of this last week are like the the finishing sequences of some of these matches. Uh, they're really good, but they're even better if you are familiar with everybody's move set. Like if you know, like evil goes for the darkness falls and the banshee muzzle and the and uh and the the sto which he calls everything is is evil or whatever everything 
It's evil. Uh, so if you're if you're familiar with those, and when him and like Okada, or I'm sorry, uh, him and uh, him and whoever are going back and forth in a match, uh, yeah, Okada. Uh, uh, you're like, oh, okay, Okada's going for the Rainmaker, and he's going for the 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 uh, everything is evil, and so it, it makes it that much more uh, interesting when you're more familiar with the move sets. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, let's get into. I was the- expecting a sound clip. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I, w- I was expecting you to say so. I, there wasn't much to add to that, so I understand. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah, I agree. It's we definitely do skim over them on the podcast, but if we were to really go dive into them it would be a fucking two three hour long fucking podcast yeah. and oof. <laughs> well, I, I, well i definitely try to skim through as much get i try to get what's important out of the undercard if there is something important like if somebody right. uh you know if there's a big uh if somebody yeah, is being a shithead right or if somebody scores an important pinfall on somebody else that that could be key but mm. pretty much that stuff's been uneventful you know the, the only really eventful or kind of interesting stuff undercard what yeah you get previews for the for the next day's block matches which is nice uh but also the the guys that aren't on the g1 uh aren't in the g1 tournament you get little side stories like the whole c block thing that's been going on you know chase right. o- chase owens picking up random wins and then uh you know david finley and hanare taking losses it was supposed to be Hanare and Finley in a singles match somewhere on this, uh, probably on the final night of the G1, but that's been canceled, and now it's going to be some kind of tag match. David Finlay brought, bought a trophy for the, the quote, winner of this C-block gimmick, and so uh, now it's going to be a tag. It sounds like uh, uh, Big Mike might be in that one as well with uh, David Finley and Hanare and quite possibly uh, Shota Umino in there as well, so... Uh, <laughs> So I guess the singles match would have been more interesting, but I'm wondering if New Japan might be punishing David Finlay and Hinare for kind of taking this C block thing into their own hands and saying, yeah, "We didn't authorize you to do any to make this singles match more than what it was," or or maybe they didn't take it seriously like enough, like David Finlay being a goofball in the promos, kind of you know, not really. I feel like Hanare treated it seriously. I don't know. What what do you make of them taking away the uh the C block singles match and making it a, a tag or whatever? Uh yeah I honestly wasn't keeping up to with it too much, but I was kind of seeing Kevin Kelly banter about it on Twitter and everything. So yeah. it was fun. It's definitely something, you know, it it would definitely be be fun to see kind of you know an undercard c block uh, yeah, yeah I, i'm for it you know and you know uh maybe over in next year we might see something too maybe new japan's just like no we want to be in charge like <laughs> okay we hear you but stop it <laughs> well i think it, things that they've done in the past as well is uh, they haven't done a c block but they've had bigger they've, they've had more than 20 participants i believe uh for, i think at one time they did to 22 so one Damn. extra, one extra, or maybe it was. I think you got to do two extra guys in the block. I don't know. So <laughs> you got to. <laughs> it's got to be even in each block anyway for it yeah, to, yeah. to work. I think. Uh, so I, I can't remember where I heard that. So I could be wrong on that. Don't quote me necessarily uh, on that. But I did hear that at some point along the way. It's here. tough though. Just like you know, we we kept up with and watched the last year, but this year just. It felt even more jam packed this year, like nonstop and yeah, fucking crazy ride. And if, if you and, and if you add if you add more, you know, for each guy, each person you add, that's one more match for everybody in the tournament too. So, and I feel like this mm-hmm. year they were with the with all the skullduggery stories going on, they were trying to maybe preserve some of the guys' uh, bodies a little bit here. So, I mean, you add more matches, they're. they're probably going to end up being more of that and people well, that, that aspect even you know played on into later the matches with like you know the tongans are fucking like still cool while everyone else is like beat up going to war and everything they're like man we don't care we're so good <laughs> right right well we'll get into what's going on with the tongans and everything here as we as we kind of move along here some a little bit of i don't know controversy but new japan uh, doled out some discipline allegedly uh so we'll, we'll get into that here as we as we go along, but let's start all the way back from uh, from August fourth. This was night fourteen in the B block. 
B Block. Uh, Yano, who had only one win, taking on Sonata with uh, six points. Sonata needing the win here. He gets it. Just a two star match, in my opinion. Oh, and by the way, go to bestprowrestlingpodcast.com or stronghonor.com, and you can click on the uh, the menu there, and you can find my recommended G1 matches. I'm actually a couple of days behind on updating that, but I will do that after we record the show today, and so you'll find all my mostly my most uh, strongly recommended G1 matches in case you don't have the time but you do want to see uh, the best of the best stuff here. Uh, but yeah, Sonata gets the win here over Yano. This was kind of a fun match with the uh, with with uh, Sonata uh, putting Yano in the paradise lock outside the ring and Rocky Romero trying to come to Yano's rescue and Sonata putting yeah. him in the paradise lock. What a homie, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're both chaos members, so it's understandable. But then him getting the win by putting him in the, uh, in the paradise lock, uh, like on the barricade that was like taped to the ring post, uh, or whatever. I thought that was kind of a fun, unique finisher for that one. Yeah, I, I thought it was fun. It was, uh, you know, fucking, I, I don't hate Yano matches. <laughs> like, he does such a good job, especially in the, the G1 where, He's a complete goofball. His matches are just kind of throwaway matches, but you're not skipping them. You know, it's interesting, too, because I don't like the uh, uh, the uh, skullduggery that we're getting necessarily out of the, the Tongan stuff, the, uh, the the firing squad or whatever. But here, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm expecting with Yano, right? But then I, I found myself, even uh, today when I was watching the most recent uh, Tama Tonga match, he was having a good match with uh, Kota Ibushi, and it was mostly the you know just because they were just having a pretty much a straight up match or whatever. And then the mm-hmm. skullduggery did can't come in late, but it didn't really take away because I was almost expecting it, you know. So it's almost like we've been you know we're educated on uh, what Yano does, and we're, we expect these things in Yano matches. And now that we know that this shit's going to happen in these firing squad matches, mm-hmm. it's like okay, well. Maybe they'll have a good match up until a point, and then what's going to happen once the skullduggery uh, takes place? Will the baby face or whoever they're going against uh, be able to prevail despite all the bullshit and whatnot? So uh, I, I, we'll get into it when we get into that match. But I really enjoyed how they the the two matches back to back and the sequences that took place. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here, though. But speaking of Tamatanga, going back to this uh, uh, show from the fourth of August, Tamatanga versus Hirooki Goto, both with uh, four points here. Goto getting the win with DQ again. Ref bumps, skullduggery, all the stuff uh, <laughs> in that one. Uh, mm-hmm. I gave that one a half star. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, I do like how Tomatonga, yeah, <laughs> tomatonga has been like calling him, uh, calling Dave Meltzer like Damie Meltzer or whatever, ba- Baby Meltzer or something in his in his promos. I think I've been getting a kick out of that. That's funny. Uh, Juice Robinson with six points taken on. I'm sorry, Juice Robinson with four points, only two wins taken on Zack Saber Jr. Uh, Juice was cutting really good promos into this thing. Uh, Zach's Zach Saber saying, "I'm gonna, you know what, Juice, I'm gonna." Come Come in there. I'm going to beat you in the G1 climax. Then I'm going to challenge you at the uh, Walter Pyramid at Strong Style Unleashed uh, in uh, in uh, October and uh, take the belt from you there. So Zack Saber laying out the challenge before the match even took place uh, in the promos, and he in fact did get the win. I really enjoyed uh, this match. Uh, I only gave it three and a quarter stars, but I liked. I love the juice story. Uh, Zack Saber with that insane pretzel submission. Mission he calls cremation lily. Uh, I thought <laughs> that was so in, like I was tapping out looking at that submission. Yeah, it's the, the dude's a maniac to watch. It's, it's just no matter which way he twists, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, fun match there. Then a really good match, just under five stars for me. I gave, I gave it, uh, three and three quarter. Kenny Omega, who's, uh, running the tournament, going undefeated, 12 points here, versus Tomohiro Ishii, out of the running, only four points. Very good match. Ishii gets the win here. So, uh, spoiling Kenny's undefeated streak in the tournament. Uh, early taunting from, uh, both guys here. And, uh, you know what? I, 
I skipped a night. We got we're, we're on the we're on the fourth. We didn't talk about the second yet. Shit. Oh, that was great. <laughs> I'll go back. We'll do that at, in a minute here because yeah, it was, this was this was from a couple of days. Uh, this was from uh, Saturday, I believe. Anyway, Omega Ishii, great match. <laughs> Watch it. Uh, Ishii is hitting hard in the match. Of course, Omega cuts him off with a DDT and a Terminator dive. Uh, possible ankle tweak in this match, but uh, subtle enough from uh, Ishii there. A very scary looking second rope brain buster. They almost slip off the the rope in this thing, but uh, and that actually happens later in the juice match as well. So we'll get into that uh, intense. V triggers, lots of fighting spirit from both guys. Snap dragon for a near fall. Late double stomp off the apron to the floor. Uh, both are bleeding from the mouth by the end, but Omega is really badly busted open. Super intense late exchanges. Omega gets a near fall with a J driller. Ishii counters a one wing angel with a crucifix bomb for a near fall. But then, yeah, Ishii finally gets the brain buster, gets the win. And uh, uh, again, not their best match, could have been better, and I'm really looking forward to when Ishii gets a title match, probably at uh, King of Pro Wrestling or uh, perhaps Power Struggle, but maybe even at one of these Destruction shows coming up in uh, in October. Should be very good. Hell yeah. Uh, Kota Ibushi versus Tetsuya Naito. Uh, Ibushi needing a win here to stay alive. He had eight points. Naito had ten points here. Um, so this one I thought was I thought was one of the greatest matches of the tournament. I gave this one five stars all the way uh, in this one. Naito's getting booed early in the match. He goes after the leg. Uh, Ibushi uh, hits a, the uh, golden uh, triangle, and then it hits an, an, an inverted figure four. They get in a slap fight. Naito spits at Ibushi multiple times, just disrespecting Ibushi, getting booed out of the building. Uh, Ibushi flips out of the uh, reverse Rana. Uh, his mouth is bleeding. Uh, hits a last ride power bomb and a second rope deadlift German for a near fall. Uh, then there's some Naito chance after that. Uh, then Naito hits the Destino-like reverse DDT that everybody calls Destino, but it's not technically a Destino because it doesn't have the full arm twist in there. Another Destino. <laughs> you need that arm twist. Exactly. Yeah, another Destino attempt, a spike brain buster, and a Bomaye for a near fall. Then uh, Ko- Kota Ibushi finally finishes off Naito, gets the win with the Kamagoye. Uh, yeah, like I said, five star. Loved this match. Any thoughts on that one, Taco? Yeah, no, no complaint or you know, no complaints. It's it's so fun, awesome shit. All right, let's uh, correct course and go back to the second of August and go to the eight. Go to the uh, the A block. A block. Came, that was me turning the car around. Completely skipped uh, uh, this night. And actually, there wasn't a ton of good stuff on this show. Uh, Elgin beat Fale in a DQ. Uh, <laughs> the typical skullduggery stuff there. Hangman Page did beat Togi Makabe, getting his first pinfall win of mm-hmm. the tournament. I did. I, I thought this was a statement win. Uh, a decent match. Only I only gave it three and a half stars, so uh, it could have been better. Uh, again, you got Makabe in there, so what are you going to do? But, I mean, this is... This is a statement win because you know Hangman Page. This is his first G one. He was desperate for a win. He's getting over with the crowds. And Makabe, you know, he's a former IWGP champion. He's a former G one Climax winner and you know, a big star in Japan. So this is a, this is a statement win here uh, for for Hangman Page. Yeah, man, uh, just fucking first you know pin, pinfall on the g1 the fucking look on his face was just you could tell you just want to be like yippee kaye motherfucker <laughs> like in the middle of that ring but you know playing it fucking cool like it, it was awesome man i popped hard for that yeah yeah and 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 just i like seeing hangman page in there with a hard hitter like makabe too yeah oh, hell yeah man he and he he fucking holds it down too absolutely uh jay white versus yoshihashi jay white with eight here so needing to win to continue momentum going forward yoshihashi with a lowly two points uh jay white <laughs> jay white continues to just be a really good heel like his gimmick now is after the matches he's really tired and he demands that the press give him a chair to sit on when he's making his post-match press conference <laughs> and so he, he gets angry at the press he grabs this woman by the face and says next time put a goddamn chair in here uh so yeah, awesome. really good heel stuff from jay white during the match 
matches and well, in, in the post. Rocky Romero on the fucking commentary uh, when Jay White out, was out and is awesome. And Kevin Kelly is like, you going to cheer for him? He's like, hell no. Like, I'm sick of this mad guy. Like, just fucking completely disgusted with him. And it, it, it's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm really wondering if, I mean, we talked about it last week, but I feel like there's got to be a big story coming up. You know, uh, when it comes to the night of the finals, you know, some kind of angle uh, with a possible coming together of Jay White and the uh, the the uh, the Tongan side of the Bullet Club there, right. or maybe just Jay White getting kicked the fuck out of chaos or something like that too. Uh, it could be a possibility, but you know, Jay White's still in the running to to win this this whole damn thing as well. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. But this match here with Yoshihashi, he was especially aggressive. He continually throws Yoshihashi into. The English announced Kel- in, uh, uh, English announced table uh, conti- going back to the you know the JR gimmick uh, from the uh, from the Cow Palace show. Kevin Kelly gets so upset he drops a goddamn on commentary, which you don't hear <laughs> Kevin Kelly swear very like no. yeah. And so you already knocked out our goddamn feed here, you know, or whatever he says. But uh, yeah, and whether that was planned or not, just the fact that they, they they were doing that in there just adds to the whole drama of everything that's going on with uh white and being a dick and uh doing it to the 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 you know the media the ring announcers uh, everybody so uh, fellow chaos members so it just keep it just plays into that entire story jay white gets the win with the blade runner of course after a ref bump and the low blow uh so more of that same stuff there from jay white three stars on that one uh, then a pretty good match here, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Evil Tanahashi with 10 points here, continuing to build that momentum. Evil had 8 points, so if he could get the win here, that would really uh, keep his momentum going towards the finals. Gave this one just under 4, 3 and 3 quarter stars. Uh, Tanahashi gets the win with the uh, high fly flow after hitting everything is evil uh, and after... Uh, and after uh, countering the uh, everything is evil. Uh, evil targets the right arm. That's the one he's got in the sleeve from uh, uh, from the bicep injury from a year ago or whatever. Ta- Tana Hashi uh, counters evil's signature offense. Goes for two high fly flows. Misses the second high fly flow. Can tell and sells that uh, that uh, formerly injured arm. But man, Tanahashi. Let's talk about him for a second here, because he's in the running here at the finals, and you know, just a, Still a badass. He is, man, and yeah, he looks like he's uh, limping a bit when he's running them ropes or whatever. But when he hits those high fly flows, goddamn, those things look good. Yeah, the uh, the only match that I'm just that was fucking trash was that Elgin match, <laughs> right? Oh. Very, very awkward between both of them. It just. Not just because there's a big botch at the end, just the whole match just felt very weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get into that here. Uh, Suzuki versus Okada in the main event from the second here in the A block. Oh, yeah, we're still on the second. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, this one also a very good match. Uh, four and three quarters, so just under five for me, Okada versus Suzuki. Again, the story going in, both guys got eight points. Okada lost his first couple of matches of the tournament, so uh, him going uh, kind of undefeated towards the tw- heading towards the finals here is a big story. Suzuki mm-hmm. a, a Suzuki attacks before the introductions. They brawl into the crowd. The typical Suzuki uh, style brawl here. Suzuki dominates the early part of the match. Uh, Okada smiles at him, and then they have a strike battle, and then the, the, the uh, sweat starts flying here. Uh, the elbo- elbows e- evolve into slaps. Suzuki man- maintains control after some slap fighting there. After 15 minutes, Okada counters the gotch pile driver as it has a rainmaker attempt. Suzuki slaps. Slaps him, puts him in the octopus. Then he hits the tomb. Then Okada hits the tombstone pile driver. They go back and forth. Suzuki hits the gotch pile driver, but Okada hits the rainmaker after the rolling lariat and that uh, that gotch pile driver. So Okada gets the win there again. Great match. That's definitely on my list of uh, recommended matches. And then going into this too, don't forget the the last two matchups between these two guys were two 30 minute draws. The match last year at the G one and the uh, Suzuki uh, 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 30 year anniversary show of the, the match they had in the rainstorm or whatever from a month or so ago, a couple of months back. Oh, that was a draw too. Yep. That one was also a 30 minute draw. So, 
Uh, with a couple of draws, Okada finally getting off the schneid there uh, against Suzuki. All right, we're going to get back into order here. We did the 13th, we did the 14th, or the, sorry, the 13th night, the 14th night. Now we'll get into night 15. This is from August 5th. I, it's weird because everybody says, you know, night 7, night 8, night 14, night 15. But I think it's important when you say that, it's also important to say the date. Because if you go on to njpwworld.com to watch one of these shows, they're not listed by, you know, night 15, night 14. They're listed, yeah. they're listed by the date. So I always try to put the uh, the date in there so people know what uh, show we're talking about and how they can See, go. I don't go by nights. I go by the dates. Exactly, exactly. Everybody talks about night. Oh, that match from night 7 was great. But how do you go find night 7? you got to go count one. Two, three. Nobody wants to do that. So, oh, remember, <laughs> say the date when you're talking about these uh, these G1 matchups. So, back to the A block. A block. This is from uh, Sunday, of course, in Osaka. So, bigger shows here. Uh, Yoshihashi versus Bad Luck Fale. Yoshihashi gets the win with the DQ after the uh, the uh, the skullduggery, uh, of course. There, <laughs> Hegman Page versus Minoru Suzuki. Another dude, s- uh, dude, yeah. Uh, go ahead. What were you gonna say, dude? <laughs> I, I fucking I was cooking breakfast when this shit happened. Some Ooh. fucking French toast. I'm just all like, oh no, fucking way! Like just popped hard, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good fucking match. Yeah, Suzuki with eight points in here. So him trying to stay in this thing in the tournament here after just losing to uh, Okada, Hangman Page with just you know two wins. One of them mm-hmm. was one of them being that DQ from night one, and then just finally getting a win versus Makabe. Uh, so him, him just desperate to build any kind of momentum here and and uh, and look good in a match has a hell of a match with Suzuki. He attacks Suzuki and Desperado before the bell hits a moonsault off the stage. Uh, Suzuki intimidates the referee but page doesn't back down to him page spits and nope. spits in suzuki's face loses a strike battle but he still won't back down page wins with the right of passage uh state that big dick energy <laughs> statement win uh from hangman page uh i only gave it three and a half stars it wasn't a bad match it, but it also wasn't a great match it was just it was a, it was a good match uh but no, it was a good match it's just yeah. I, I fucking enjoyed it because it's right off the bat you know hangman page is just like for him being a you know a younger cat you know fighting someone like suzuki he he did his fucking homework you know like yeah. he knew what he was gonna do right off the bat fucking attack 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 and it was it was just awesome to see something like that in that match and him actually put fucking victory off in the end you know so it's like damn you know yeah never so, backing yeah down. it was just what to me it was one of the biggest pops of the g1 so far because i wasn't really expecting that i had you know uh, i had him pegged on my on my list to win but that was just fucking firing up in the air and hoping to hit something <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no kidding uh jay white versus togi makabe uh white with his 10 points here makabe with four white wins with the blade runner after some chair skull duggery here uh this was this, this was uh, not a not a good match here, just two and a half stars for me. But there was an interesting story going into it with White being, you know, the former young lion and Makabe kind of being his senpai or whatever, one of his trainers, uh, one of his instructors, uh, certainly his senior. Uh, so that was uh, that, that kind of added to a bit of the drama it's here. Big show. Uh, Makabe hits the spider belly to belly, but Jay avoids the King Kong knee, uh, uses red shoes as a human shield, so some skullduggery there. Uh, him getting the win with the skullduggery. Uh, the Blade Runner after the skullduggery continues that heel story that they're telling with Jay White. Elgin versus Tanahashi. You were, this is the one you were uh, just referring to uh, a little bit ago. Uh, Tanahashi wins with a sloppy roll-up counter to the Elgin bomb. Uh, yeah. Uh, I thought this was I thought this was a decent match, uh, but some you know, some slow stuff in the middle there. Uh, if someone was like Tanahashi, so good he could wrestle a slug and have a five, <laughs> five star classic. This is proof he can't. Yeah, yeah, I th- yeah. I thought the 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 Elgin near falls and the plotting offense in the middle took away from the match, of course. And then Elgin being Elgin doesn't always help either. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, uh, Tanahashi. I did the, the the energy did pick up when Tanahashi made his big comeback towards the end, and it got a little better there. But then the sloppy finish kind of took away from it too. But uh, it's not just me fucking hating on Elgin either. It's just 
That, that was definitely a miss. Yep, yep. <laughs> but Tanahashi continues to build huge momentum. He had 12 points going into, into that, so that one gets him up to 14. So uh, big points uh, for Tanahashi there. Uh, then it was uh, Okada versus Evil in the uh, main event here. Uh, very good match. I actually watched this one twice. Um, I only gave uh-huh. it. I only gave this one four stars. It wasn't like a five star. Oh my god, great match! But I just really enjoyed the match. Like the stuff at the end. Like I said, like uh, like I was alluding to uh, before we kind of got mm-hmm. into these. Like all the signature maneuvers and the counters were just so good and so crisp in this match. Um, and the, the uh, and then early in the match, going for the early finisher attempts, I thought you know that's kind of one of Okada's signature deals that he does in almost all of his matches is teasing uh, early finisher uh, attempts. Uh, but then uh, uh, you know coming back to it later in the match, I just thought it was a very solid, good match, and they could come back. I mean, obviously these two had the story last year where Evil beat Okada, then they had the rematch for the championship. This one, Okada gets the win, continuing to get. Uh, build his momentum, getting him up to 12 points. Uh, but just, I just thought just a solid story and, and, and a good match. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, let's move up to night 16 now. Back to the B block. B block. Uh, this was from the 8th of, uh, well, from today, 8 8 18. Uh, and some history here that uh, Kevin Kelly well, talked about. some food. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's some history to this date uh, uh, in uh, in Japan. No, uh, eight eight eighty eight was a, a big classic match uh, that took place in the same building, I believe. Yes, uh, yep. I'm trying to get the uh, the name of the building or the it's in Yokohama. Uh, so a, a classic uh, sixty minute draw uh, back in the day on eight eight eighty eight, and so oh, that's shit, what- I got those tires. <laughs> so that's why they come back to uh, to Yokohama every August eighth, and this was the thirty year anniversary uh, of that show. Uh, so, any. Ooh. Anyway, uh, Ishii versus Juice. Uh, Ishii with six points, Juice with four. So uh, both of these guys mathematically eliminated. But I thought this was a sneaky good opening uh, opening yeah, man. match for the uh, for the G one matches. I gave this thing four stars too. I thought this was a hell of a match. Hard hitting stuff back and forth from these guys. Juice fucking makes Ishii's chest bleed at yeah. one point. You fucking brought Ishii down with the chops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, again, Juice, uh, he's got that uh, soft cast on that he rips off so he can actually punch him with the left hand. That comes into play. Fun. The doctors recommend not to. Exactly, exactly. Uh, very good match here. This is the one also where Ishii hit that second rope uh, uh, brain buster attempt, but uh, fucking Juice slipped and almost fucking, like, <laughs> Ishii yeah. saved Juice's life in this match with that. Uh, with him almost each other. falling off the uh, the top rope there, but yeah, Ishii gets the win after a great exchange here. Loved this match. Four stars again. This will make my recommended list for sure. Uh, but yeah, Juice- I started watching this match this morning and uh, got distracted getting ready for work. So before you hit me up to start recording for the podcast, I was like, "Well, all right, I'm finishing this match. Like, <laughs> no fast forwarding." <laughs> Yeah, so we're worth watching that one. Absolutely, yeah. Really loved that match. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Hiroki Goto. Uh, Sabre with eight points, but I think technically Sabre is eliminated here. Uh, we'll get into it here in a minute here. Uh, but he had eight points. Goto with six. Oh, and I want to go back to the Juice story here. He's got a, Ishii is a potential challenger for his U.S. championship, and... Uh, also, with Zack Saber already challenging for the for the U.S. Championship, but I think Ishii is more likely to go after Goto. I believe he already beat uh, uh, Goto in uh, in their matchup. Fuck that! Ishii yeah. has Omega's number. I want that. Yeah, put that, that on paper. Yeah, that, that that too, definitely, definitely. So Ishii's got some, yeah. With the with he Ishii's got he beat all the champions. That, that's that was the point I was going to make. I, I, that I he beat mm-hmm. he beat Juice, he beat Goto, and he beat Omega. So he's got his pick, <laughs> and, and he's probably yeah. Kevin Kelly said it on the commentary. He's all like, "I'm excited to see who Ishii's going to pick because it's going to be real exciting." Well, I mean, between the destruction, power struggle, and uh, and King of Pro Wrestling, he could challenge a champion on each one of those. 
shows. So and there right. and technically there's three destruction shows, but they tend to spread out the the you know the championship uh, challenges onto all three uh, of those shows. At least that's what they did last year. That's pretty much what New Japan tends to do now. Since they have so many championships, they'll spread them out over several different nights. So uh, yeah, but yeah, Ishii is going to have a really good fall uh, with <laughs> challenging for multiple championships, of course, and then Zack Saber Jr. here beating the never open weight champion uh, champion Goto getting to uh getting to 10 points. I wanted to see that submission again that uh what did he call it the constipation lily or something. Uh <laughs> but uh none of that. It was the European clutch the same thing he pinned Okada with uh after Okada lost the championship. Uh but uh, Zack Saber getting the win here. Uh I thought this was decent. A three-star match. Again, it was kind of a, a, a Goto kind of taken away taken away from the match for me. I love Saber in the match, though. Just fucking relentless submissions, you know, <laughs> over and over again. So, Yep, yep. Tamatonga versus Kota Ibushi. This is the one I was talking about earlier where, again, I was expecting the skullduggery, but we had a pretty decent pro wrestling match before the skullduggery showed up. Uh, so uh, Tamatonga dominating the early action, then the brawl into the crowd, Kota Ibushi hitting the moonsault off of the, uh, off of the, the balcony in the stands there. Uh, it, it, that was, it was fun, but a little clunky getting it all set up because it took him a while to run upstairs and actually hit the moonsault, but still kind of fun to see. Yeah, every, everything. Uh, I, I enjoyed it all. Just right off the bat, Tomatonga being fucking sneaky as hell, you know, running around to get just the advantage right off the bat around the stage. And, you know, it's just it's what I was expecting. I actually had him circle to win the, this match, oddly. You know, uh, just I thought I was expecting them to come down, and, uh, you know, bull, old school bullet club style and beat the shit out of adoption. Essentially, that's what they did. You know, last week's podcast, I said that it's going to beat the living piss out of him. Uh, he actually beat him, though. So I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. You know, like uh, it's a good victory. And it wasn't one of those victories, too, where it was just uh, like like maybe an earlier victory of his in the G1 where, you know, some bullshit happened, some skullduggery, and <laughs> he gets the victory, and it's just to see a booze in the crowd. No, this one was, you know, an earned vict- victory, and I-, I loved the aftermath of it, too, just the constant beatdown and, you know, Kenny Omega coming out to to make the save for Kota Ibushi, like, finally yeah. he's putting his <clears throat> fucking foot down on all this bullshit, like, it's gone on long enough, and it's like, dude, he hasn't even fucking wrestled yet for the night, and backfires yeah i I liked that you know this this had a feel of like an attitude era kind of deal where these guys are out there you know you know tamatanga brings the skullduggery and so they're out there having this match of course the referee gets knocked down after uh, after tongaloa comes out and starts distracting abushi and all that bullshit so the distractions are happening the ref gets bumped here comes bad luck fale running down hitting guys with finishers omega comes out to make the save like you said tamatanga Tonga ends up getting the win uh, with a bad looking pop up stun gun, but I let, or gun stun rather. Uh, I think that was my biggest beef of the, of the whole night was every single one of those three or four of them. Every single one of them was pretty fucking awful. The uh, w- what do you mean gun stuns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah, and it could have been this one could have been better here too. Because uh, yeah, he, the he, beginning he, of the G one they were fucking on point, like yeah. fucking nasty and ruthless, like you know, like. Randy Orton has that shit fucking down to a science, man. You know, you're not not to you know, it's the same shit in a sense. But yeah. I don't know if it's just the 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 couple he pulled off tonight was just very like, ugh. Well, they've been all DQ finishes. He hasn't hit a gun stun in a while. He's out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> So it's been all bullshit finishes. So he hasn't he hasn't hit his finisher in three weeks. Uh, so there was that. So after the match, of course, the Tongans continue to attack Kenny Omega. Omega's laid out. He got power bombed by uh, Bad Luck Fale. Yano comes running out. We're going to have the match here. Uh, Omega with his big twelve points. Or Yano with two, looking for an upset. He gets it uh, here, but a fun match. Uh, Yano quickly came out and quickly got ready. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, and then you know the near fall right off the bat. You know, uh, 
and then taking off the turnbuckle pads right away. Uh, you got Chase in the corner taking the place of the turnbuckle pad. I loved that little bit of it. Mm-hmm. Putting the, uh, you know, just holding the turnbuckle pad in place so that Kenny Omega can hit something soft. And then the, Yano doing the suplex onto all the, all four of the turnbuckle pads laid down in the middle of the ring and Kenny Omega like, that was softer. I'm fine. You know, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I enjoyed all of that. Uh, the double low blow. Referee goes down. The Tongans come and attack him again. Here, that of course leads to uh, uh, Tama Tonga dragging Yano on top of Kenny Omega, so that when the referee wakes up, he can count the pin. Yano gets the ugly victory with the Tongans out in the skullduggery, and uh, and so uh, some drama here uh, in the uh, in the B block with uh, Kenny Omega and Kota. Abushi taking some losses here. And then uh, the, for the main event here must win for Naito. He's got 10 points. Naito alive, too. Yep, exactly. Naito with 10 points here. Sonata looking for 10 points with 8 here. And your Los Ingobernables versus Los Ingobernables storyline at play here as well. I liked this match. I gave it four, but there was some sloppy stuff in this one, too. I thought uh, it could have been a little bit better, but I liked the ideas that they had. Uh, you know, Again, the, the signature offense and the counters to it, all of that stuff, really good ideas, just not executed very well in this match. I thought could have been a little bit better. Uh, I kind of liked that because it was just very – it was very slow-paced match, too, very, like – not really wanting to go full speed at each other, but still, you know, fighting for that spot. Yeah, and again, with these guys being Los Ingobernables teammates, they don't get in the ring uh, against each other very often, so that could be a part of the reason why maybe some of the chemistry was, you know, a little bit off. They don't wrestle against each other very often, so that certainly could be part of uh, what t- took the match down a little bit. Again, it was a great match. I gave it four stars, uh, <laughs> but I thought, again, could have been better. Uh, Naito hits that reverse DDT on the ramp, and then the, uh, the low drop kick, the running drop kick. Uh, they spit in each other's face in the match. Sonata counters some Destino attempts, um, some sloppy counters late in the match. Sonata Nada hits a Destino for a near fall, or a, uh, I should say the Destino-like reverse DDT for a near fall. And then mm-hmm. it, there was the dramatic skull end uh, in the match, uh, but then he misses the moonsault, uh, and then Naito gets he the win. The paradise lock in, did he? No, never did. He, he kind of saves that for most, kind of the undercard stuff or the more silly matches, uh, or, you know, some, some, some tag matches that aren't quite as, as serious. Mm-hmm. But in the main event, I don't think you're going to see too many paradise blocks. Naito even got his fucking tranquilo pose in, did he? Right. No, he tried a couple of times. And, and I, I, I actually, that was the fun thing, too. Like, uh, uh um, uh, Sonata was on that, you know, outside yeah. of the ring. Yeah, I know what bullshit you're doing right here. And yeah, the, like, like I, I've been kind of complaining, complaining about some of the sloppy stuff. The the really early exchanges in the match I thought were really on point, uh, actually. So, uh, the, the, the sloppy stuff coming later, maybe they were just tired, uh, but, or maybe they just planned the early stuff a little bit better because I thought the early action was pretty good. Uh, yeah, and Naito countering all the tranquilo spots and and stuff like that. So. But we did get the we did get a nice respectful fist bump after the match. Naito and Sonata or Sonata's been uh, avoiding the fist bump uh, all, all throughout the tournament. So uh, in kind of the build up to this match, so so we did finally get the fist bump after the match. They brought Evil brought out uh, Hiromu's jacket, which was a nice yes. touch uh, as for Naito to do his uh, his uh, Los Ingobernables speech there at the uh, at the end there. I was looking for my, uh, uh, my, oh, there he is. Los Ingobernables de Japón. I still, I still get chills. I still love when he does that speech and does the hits the big line uh, at, at the end of the show after hit uh, after winning a main event. Uh, I, I just dig it, man. Oh yeah, like. Uh, uh... You know, I, I usually stick around after watching a, an event for like an if Omega closes out the thing, uh, if Okada closes out, I'll sometimes stick around. Maybe depending on you know if I have the time to watch it or whatnot. But yeah, if 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 Naito's closing out the show, I, <laughs> I, I gotta watch it. I gotta, especially if they have if they got a translator there, that always helps too. <laughs> yeah, that was that was nice actually. So, okay, so standings as of right now, 
Uh, in the A block, it's, here's what we got. A block. You got three guys in the running. You got Tanahashi at the top of it with 14, Okada and Jay White with 12. So if Jay White can get to 14 points, he's got to beat Evil here. If Jay White gets to 14, he wins because he's got the tiebreakers over Tanahashi and Okada. So if Jay White, so I'm, I'm almost wondering if they, if, if Jay White and Evil be, becomes the main event uh, of the show, uh, because if he, because oh, wow. if he loses the, sh- well, I guess if he, I, that wouldn't make any sense because he'll probably just lose to Evil and it'll come down to Tanahashi and Okada and that's. I mean, mm-hmm. of, that's a main event anywhere in the world, of course. Uh, so that's like on August tenth. That's, that's an, it, I can't pronounce that. What? <laughs> Nothing. I was like on August tenth, and I was like, I don't know where the fuck the arena is. Never oh, the, mind. Oh, the the Budokan. Yeah, they're doing they're doing the the final three. That? The, the final three nights are from the the Budokan. Uh, okay. There, it's a bigger arena from what uh, from the one that they've ran the past few years uh, for the finals. So uh, they're going, they're moving up to uh, bigger and better uh, buildings and and uh, and viewers. That was another uh, thing that they talked about on the show uh, from Wednesday uh, was. Uh, uh, with Chris Charlton out there on commentary, he was saying uh, with New Japan selling out all these uh, buildings for the G1 Climax and and booking bigger buildings and selling them out, plus all the subscribers to NJPWWorld.com. This has been the uh, the most viewed G1 Climax ever. So uh, really cool, uh, really cool yeah, to kind of be a... Be a uh, be a part of history here, uh, watching. And the- who's everyone talking about right now? Tomatonga, <laughs> Battle of Fale. That's right. Well, I am. Very, I'm, I, I, we're talking about them, but I'm. I'm very interested. We got a really ne- cool next few nights here: Friday, Saturday, and oh, what's Sunday. What's that other name people are talking about? Uh, Jay White. <laughs> well, they're going to be talking about Tanahashi and or Okada uh, I, again. In my predictions, I predict Okada going all the way uh, in the A block. But man, I would not be surprised to see Tanahashi in the final either. And you know, come to think of it, Jay White wouldn't feel completely inappropriate making the finals i don't see him winning and going on to the tokyo dome but uh he's certainly a possibility at this point yeah i i would like to see the dude's fucking um uh, since he came back as a regular for the new japan i was all right and nah fucking i'm loving every single fucking thing he's doing now and the nastier it gets the fucking you know more hateable he is it's great who is uh, who is your pick in the uh, in the A block? I forgot. Uh, God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> uh, I had Okada winning every single match except for Jay White. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I mean, he could still win the block. That could be the big tiebreaker too, couldn't it? Well, Jay White already beat Okada, so again, he's got the tiebreaker there. Uh, so Are they tied at the moment, or? Uh, they are tied points wise right now, but Jay okay. White has that tiebreaker. So again, mm-hmm. again, if Jay if Jay White gets to fourteen points, he's got the tiebreaker over Tanahashi and Okada. So it wouldn't even matter. Well, I guess no. I guess even even if Jay White gets to fourteen, Ta- I'm sorry, I, I I misspoke there. Even if Jay White wins and gets to fourteen, Tanahashi could still win because he could get to sixteen if he beats uh, Okada. So if Jay, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry for misspeaking earlier. Uh, yeah, Jay White wins, he gets to 14. That that would knock Okada out uh, right there. But Tanahashi can still get to 16 points. So screwed up my analysis there. I can't believe I did that. What is going on with me? doing the math? Doing the math. I don't know. So, so we both have Okada winning the A block in our predictions. So, not that anybody gives too many too many shits about uh, our predictions, but uh, predictions. As far as mine go, I have in the A block. I got uh, 10, 20, I got twenty six correct predictions so far uh, in the A block. What are you looking like there, Taco? I'm looking at thirty. Ooh, damn! What did I say? Twenty mm. one or twenty six? I said twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. So you got a few on me there. You got four. I got a couple of those upsets though. So I, yeah. that was nice. Yeah, I got a couple in there as well. Uh, going over to the B block now. B block. I've got uh, I've got twenty eight in the B block. So ditto. Okay, so yeah, we're pretty darn close. So it's going to come down to these last couple of nights. Uh, 
for predictions here. Let's go over uh, the standings here for the uh, for the B block. A little tighter here. You got Naito and Omega with twelve points. Omega's got the tiebreaker over Omega. Uh, I'm sorry, Omega has the tiebreaker over Naito uh, way back from the first night of B-block action, so night two, technically. Go ahead, Taco. Naito, oh, I was going to say, Naito needs Omega and Ibushi to tie to to go on Co- and win. Correct, correct. So that's pretty much who it's down to. Uh, Ibushi, uh, let's see, I forget, Ibushi... Yeah, Ibushi's got the win over Naito, so if Ibushi can win against Omega, he goes to the finals because he's he's got the tiebreaker over uh, Naito. So if Ibushi wins, he's in. If uh, well, I guess it really depends too because Naito, uh, depend, uh, Naito faces Zack Saber, so if Naito wins and gets fourteen points, then Omega has to win to get to fourteen, and uh, Ibushi is out if Naito wins. So potential. Spoilers uh, are, are in there. So, but yeah, interesting stuff uh, there in the final. And then another interesting uh, final match here. Let's still, let's talk about these matchups here uh, for the finals here and our predictions for that. Uh, so we got the uh, we got shows Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Final show for the A block is on Friday, of course. Uh, I've got Hangman August tenth. Pa- Correct, August tenth. Thank you. Uh, I got Page beating. <laughs> I got Page beating Yoshihashi. Who do you got? I got Paige in that one too. Yeah, I like the, I, I like that not only my predictions are telling the story, but that they are telling the story of Hangman losing early in the tournament, but then getting some wins late in the tournament, even though he's been mathematically eliminated. Uh, he, 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 it gives him some nice momentum here. I, I'm I'm digging that story. And fucking walking away with what you know, uh, if if he pulls this one off, what was it going to be? Eight points? Then that's a good fucking G one for your first one. Let me see here. Where is Paige? Is he at six? Yeah, that's, yeah. So exactly, that would be a good uh, good showing for for him. Makabe versus Elgin. I got Makabe in that one. No, Makabe myself. Ba- well, yeah. Bad luck. Fale versus Suzuki. A bit of an interesting match here with. A potential skullduggery going both ways here with, uh, you know, Suzuki loving the, the brawl outside the ring and into the crowd. And of course, all the, the Tongan drama that's been going on. I got Fale, uh, in this one. I as well as Fale went in this one. Jay White versus Evil. I got Jay White in this one. Keeping, keeping his uh, tournament hopes alive. And then in the final, I got Okada beating Tanahashi. Of course, o- Okada is my A block winner. Yep, yep. Same here. And then uh, uh, for the 11th, for Saturday, uh, back to the B block now. B block! Yano versus Tamatonga. I got Tamatonga winning that one. Yeah, I got Tamatonga just fucking throwing Yano around. But again, that that could be a fun and or interesting match with Yano's bit of skullduggery and Tamatonga's uh, skullduggery as well. What uh, Especially with Ibushi and Omega kind of wanting to come out for some revenge on him now. Yeah, that might be that might, that, that could be an inter- an interesting story too. And what role, if any, does uh, does the, uh, the the firing squad have in this Kenny Omega Kota Ibushi final match? Because uh, that could be a possible story going in. Do they have? Do they have those guys spoil a a pristine and beautiful G one climax uh, final night main event? That would be oof. That would be uh that that would get you some heat. Have to. I don't know. Fucking, but- you fucking you you get the the, the fucking bull club out there. You bring you Yujiro then. You get fucking Jay White in, and you got a fucking deadly force right there. Yeah, it'll be it'll be really interesting because yeah, Jay White is has a vested interest. Well, I guess no, he's no, I'm sorry, he's a he's a block, but he, he certainly could uh, play a part uh, there on the final. I just night. feel like the Tokyo pimp really needs to be on the fucking tongue side of things. Hey, man, they tried to get him, but uh, he you know he stood up for Cody and Kenny back at the uh, uh, back at the Cow Palace. So they they were talking about so. that in their promos too. Like, man, we wanted you, Yujiro, but you 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 went turncoat on us, man. So. I, 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 Set up. He's a plant. Could be. Could be. He's an inside man. <laughs> They're at fucking war, man. They're in war. So uh, anyway, back to Saturday, the, sh- the, sh- the Saturday show. Ishii versus Sonata. I got Ishii in that one. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ishii. Fucking, I'm expecting this match to be fucking 
one one of the night bangers. Yeah, it it really could be. And Ishii's been killing it lately, but it makes me wonder if uh, maybe they take a break in this match because it's you know second match on the show or whatever or the, in the uh, block matches anyway. So, but yeah, Ishii not known for taking any breaks either. So, and I think Sonata has been he he's had a he hasn't had a great tournament, but he's had a sneaky good tournament. You know, the match with Zack Saber where, where he was you know hanging in the uh, in the in the submission game, and then the uh, the, the most recent match with uh, with Naito where you know I don't at- mean this in a negative way. I just I don't think they it, ever. Everyone went into this tournament with a halo of fucking hype around him this time. No, absolutely. there was more hype for him last year, and then when he didn't really deliver, you know, the hype was diminished this year. But I thought he, I thought he, he did well this year, but he didn't do a ton to kind of improve his uh, position or how uh, fans feel about him. I th- I don't think. He was over with that fucking crowd uh, against Naito, though. Yeah, that's true. So that's it's it's interesting. I think it was maybe more of. Because uh, there were parts uh, towards the end of that match where the crowd was chanting for Naito, too. I think it's more of mm-hmm. being an LIJ crowd, and Sonata is kind of looked at as the underdog in that story, being that Naito, he's the bigger guy. You know, you're, you're not bigger physically, but bigger popularity-wise. But so, And so everybody loves a good underdog story, so I think the crowd early was rooting for Sonata, but then late in the match, when uh, when uh, Sonata was getting some of the heat on Naito, the crowd uh, picked up and, and cheered for Naito as well. So it's I think it's just a, a symptom of Los Ingobernables just being super over. Um, for sure. Uh, so there's that. Uh, where are we at here? We were doing Saturday Juice Robinson versus Goto. This is an interesting match because you got the U.S. champ versus the Never champ. And who do you put over here? I picked Goto in my picks way back from a month ago, but man, I am rooting for Juice Robinson in every match. Uh, who you got in this one, Taco? I think me and you have been drinking out of the same bottle because I have Goto <laughs> myself, and I'm totally fucking on Juice's side. Like, motherfucker, you need to win this one. Get your lips off my bottle, Taco. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, and then we got the two big main events from Saturday, Tetsuya Naito versus Zack Sabre. I picked Naito. I got Naito going all the way in my B block. So I got Naito getting the win there, but some potential drama if uh, if, if Sabre gets the win there. We didn't really talk about Sabre's potential here. Uh, in the B block, because he does have 10 points, but he has losses to uh, Kota Ibushi and Omega already. Uh, so even if he gets to 12, uh, Omega is probably going to get to 14. Uh, if he wins, Ibushi would get to 12 if he wins, so he's got the tiebreaker over Zack Sabre. So technically, Zack Sabre is, uh, is out of it uh, uh, mathematically here. Uh, but should be a good match, and and if they don't, if 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 Naito isn't winning the whole tournament, uh, potential for Zack Saber to get an upset here should be a good match either way. Oh yeah, agreed. Uh, it, it's uh, the redemption for Naito too, since they yeah. lost that uh, the New Japan Cup. Exactly. Yeah, that's I forgot about that story too. Uh, who do you got? Uh, who's your pick in this one? Oh, Naito. That's what I'm saying. Uh, since he, since Saber kind of whooped his ass in that New Japan Cup, uh, you yep. know, this one, since this one's a, a a little bit bigger stage. This is a, a good way for Naito to get that redemption there on that loss. So. And then go on to the finals. For sure, for sure. Then the main event, Kota Ibushi versus Kenny Omega, the one we've all been waiting for. I got this one picked as a draw. So, uh, Taco. God damn it. <laughs> is that what you got, too? I do. I have both of them <laughs> circled. It just it, it it makes the most sense because when the when these two guys fucking really go at it, they're gonna have to fucking really let them go at it. And uh, with, with Omega as champion and G one online, I don't feel like that's the high stakes. I feel like that's just the setting. So uh, it, leaving us want more, like just fucking, just like it's like just giving us a piece of the fat on their steak. Like that's all you get. Not Cherryo. Yeah. It's like, God damn it! <laughs> well, and it's a good story, too, because, I mean, you've got potential for the firing squad to get involved. Uh, a draw sh- mm. a draw technically uh, would mean that Kenny Omega would probably want to defend the title against uh, a guy he went to a draw with later in the year, so you would absolutely get the rematch in an hour-long time limit situation, uh, well. which which would be great. Um 
And I feel like both of them, or at least one of them's got to come out and fuck with Tama Tonga, make him, you know, losing that Yano match too, fucking, you know, further angering the tongue inside and them causing, you know, them just to come out, lay them both out. And, you know, that's why I feel like we're going to get some surprise member, you know, uh, a member or two outside of Jay White. Yeah, it could be really interesting. And so I, the way I booked my uh, my predictions here with those two going to a draw, that puts Naito uh, in the winnings, uh, in the winning for the block. So is that who you got uh, winning B block as well as Naito? Yep, I have uh, the, the, the Wrestle Kingdom rematch for, you know, the title shot against Kenny Omega. So it's just, it, it just makes perfect sense. Uh, they're the, the, the big trilogy of uh, uh, New Japan right now. So, so we both, you know, we both have Naito going all the way in this thing. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> All right, so it's going to come down to just these last few matches then, really. I mean, sure. And we got a lot of the same picks here, too. I think we had all the same picks, didn't we? I think so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess you win, Taco. <laughs> yeah. Because you got, like, you got, like, two, three or four two more. more. Yeah, <laughs> correct, and I did, so. Uh, if, but it just, it just makes the most sense right now because as much as I've been enjoying the fucking Okada and Omega matches – you know, don't overdo it. Don't expect a fucking five star class guy with these guys. Like it's 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 nice treat so far how they've been doing it. So uh, I I want this Naito in the in the situation. I want him a little bit there, a little bit more. Not in the Intercontinental, but you know we still have Jericho in the background lurking around. Right? So. You know, where's where's his fucking title shot? He's beat beat Omega last year's Wrestle Kingdom. Fucking how about title for title, motherfucker? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know that's a sneaky little story that nobody's talking about right now. Is Chris Jericho's out there somewhere walking around with the IWGP Intercontinental Title? So he'll- oh, I hope that's the only thing he wears on the fucking cruise is like a fucking <laughs> Beto and that fucking title. Oh, that'd be that'd be pretty good. That'd be pretty good. And it's fucking makeup. So like when he comes back off the cruise, he has like the fucking clockwork orange like sunburn on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to go finish the fucking Fozzy tour, fucking just with this ridiculous ass fucking sunburn. Well, I'm sp- for that. Speaking of Jericho and, and all of that, people are, people want to know when is Jericho going to come back to New Japan and defend this title? So earlier this year, we looked it up. The Fozzy tour wraps up in early October, which would mean he could possibly defend it on. Uh, let's see here the. Uh... The, uh, Whatever the fuck he wants to defend, <laughs> he it. can defend. Uh, October eighth is King of Pro Wrestling, so that's the big October show, and then November third is Power Struggle. So I don't know if he's coming in for both or just one. So the earliest could possibly be the eighth for King of Pro Wrestling, which is probably the most likely at this point. But uh, you know what? You know what I'm kind of hoping for right now, as I'm thinking about it, is New Japan does kind of you know hold back on the swear words a little bit, kind of. Gets back where they were about, you know, two years ago, kind of to just background like, oh, bullshit, you know, minor <laughs> swear words. And then fucking ti- the fucking Titan Tron hits and there's Jericho's face. It's like, hey, motherfucker, guess who's back? That's what I want now. <laughs> <laughs> So Jericho to break that seal. Let me see here. Oh, no, you know what? I'm looking at the Fozzie schedule right now. This thing goes through September 29th, and they're on a break until October 6th. Uh, this this current tour that he's on. Let me see if he's off in early September. September 9th, he's got a show. Oh, no, September. I'm, i got to go October here. What am I talking about? Okay, September. Okay, so October 6th, he's got a show, and then he doesn't have a show till. Uh, uh, early November. So where are these? Where are these King of Pro Wrestling shows here? King of Pro Wrestling is on the eighth, so he could do that one because uh, he's got a show October sixth, and not another show until November seventh. Um, so he could potentially be on both actually because it's the eighth and uh, uh, the eighth of uh, October, and then the third uh, of November is Power Struggle. So he's Power Struggle, excuse me. So he could do both potentially. So I guess that's what we got going on there. All uh, right. Uh, Radical. Let- <laughs> All right, let's move away from New Japan now as 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 fun as that is. Uh and let's talk let's talk a little bit of All In before we get into the Ring of Honor cuz it kind of ties in with the uh, Ring of Honor discussion uh here All In happening 
uh, September 1st, so we're just a few weeks away here, uh, approaching very quickly. I'm very excited. I'm going to the event. Uh, but, Taco, you'll be excited to hear that uh, it will be uh, uh, All In is not only available on pay-per-view on the uh, Fight TV app, but it is, uh, it is also available for Honor Club VIP members for free. Yeah. So uh, you'll be able to watch it with your Honor Club VIP, and I'll be able to re-watch it over and over again and re-experience the, uh, uh, the, the wonderfulness that is uh, All In. So we got that announcement this week. If, uh, if you don't have honor club um it's a it's a really good value for the vip if you're into uh the 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 ring of honor pay-per-views at all uh because for 120 bucks you get a year's worth the the the, uh, of the ring of honor pay-per-views and then you get this all-in show Uh, so if you don't have the uh the VIP. If you just have the regular Honor Club, the month to month nine ninety nine, it's the same deal as the Ring of Honor pay per views. You get it for half price, so which I believe is twenty bucks because I saw it was uh, forty bucks on uh, Fight TV uh, for the pay per view price yep. on this one. So, and then we had uh, another cu- a couple other announcements. We had the uh, the, the All In Zero Hour, the first hour of All In is going to feature a couple of matches, and that's going to be live on WGN. Of course, the Chicago. Awesome. TV station that's available nationwide on most people's uh, cable TV. So that's really cool. Uh, that's going to feature SCU versus the Briscoes. SCU! SCU! And the over budget battle royal. Uh, <laughs> it's going to have 15 people in it, including like Jordan Grace and Colt Cabana uh, and some other cool indie names of people that were hoping to get on the hoping to get on the show but got in late. Uh, so that's it, I'm actually really glad that like Colt Cabana got on this show with him being you know a lifelong Chicago guy. Uh, right. And so I, I think it's cool that he got in uh, on the over budget you side think of the things. Self gets it all in. What's that? I think this is how Flip gets all in. That's certainly a possibility. They haven't announced everybody yet, and so uh, that'd be a good story. The gets title shot against uh, uh, Jay Lethal. Right, they get the title shot against Jay Lethal on the main show, uh, so that'll be really cool. Uh, all the other matches from All In, of course, Nick Aldis versus Cody Rhodes for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship, Okada versus Marty Skrull, Hangman Page versus Joey Janela at this time. I still believe that there's going to be a swerve in there and that it's going to end up being uh, Joey Ryan. Uh, but uh, Joey Ryan, he, he, famous dick wrestler, he has been uh, <laughs> allegedly murdered, but there was a witness, uh, there was a witness to him on being the elite this week. SoCal Uncensored was uh, in Hollywood. Finally, they were celebrating and uh, Scorpio Sky was about to deliver the line. This is the best time. I've ever been in, uh, but Kaz and Daniels get slightly distracted for a second. They have to turn around, and then uh, Scorpio Sky is bewildered because he sees Joey Ryan actually walk by. So he doesn't deliver the line. We don't get the satisfying moment from SCU because uh, Scorpio Sky has apparently just seen a ghost. Uh, so I believe the Joey good dead guy. So they've been building up this Joey Ryan and Hangman Page thing forever. I mean, I guess technically they. Could save something like that for the Jericho cruise, but that feels like an all-in storyline here. Uh, so I Dick guess I, I guess we will see here. Uh, Mysterio, Bandito, and Phoenix versus the Young Bucks and Kota Ibushi. Stephen Amell versus Christopher Daniels. Uh, Amell cut a nice little promo on being the elite this week. Uh, he doing the uh, the Hollywood elitist type promo. I thought that was pretty fun there. Uh, so that's what we've got announced so far for All In. So nothing announced for Kenny Omega. Nothing announced for uh, Pentagon Junior. So that's a big speculation. There are those two going to end up uh, in a singles match there. I think that would be cool, of course. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, it should be a fun time. All right, let's get into Ring of Honor now. So, Ring of Honor TV this week. Not a ton, really, to 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 get into here. A decent, solid episode of TV, but again, with the G1 going on, it's like, ah, oh, Ring of Honor TV, what are you going to do? Uh, 
Uh, we did uh, briefly mention earlier that uh, Ring of Honor is going back to the UK next weekend. Those will be Honor Club shows, so get on your nine ninety nine subscription, get on your VIP subscription uh, for those shows on the uh, 16th, 18th, and 19th next weekend. Uh, so we'll preview those. They're going to do a, a tournament on those shows as well, I believe, for a uh, title shot of some sort. Uh, so we'll get into that next week when we talk about uh, the G1 Finals and uh, and everything else. So, But uh, TV this week on Ring of Honor, we crowned a new number one contender for the TV title, Silas Young versus Chris Sabin. Chris Sabin got the win here. Good TV match, I thought. Uh, wins with the cradle shock move. Uh, good match, but the crowd was kind of cold for it. Again, this was the uh, Fairfax, Virginia TV tapings. Big building, not full, uh, but uh, a good TV match. Match. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this taco? Um, actually, I didn't see Ring of Honor Ooh. TV this week. All right. Well, I'll, I will continue with the Ring of Honor TV review on my own then. <laughs> <laughs> Marty, Marty's girl took on Hurricane Shane Helms. Uh, this was the hero versus villain match. Uh, this was okay. This was a fine TV match for what it was. I never for a moment believed that Shane Helms had a chance to beat Marty Skrull. A, a bit of an interesting story in that, you know, Marty Skrull is, quote, the villain, but he's obviously the more over guy. <laughs> but uh, also Shane Helms has kind of that baby face pop as a guy, you know, just showing up. He's like, people are into Shane Helms as like a nostalgia act. So the crowd was into both guys, but they were more into Skrull despite his uh, his. Uh, his villain-like ways. He does uh, win with a roll-up after a low blow uh, behind the referee's back, so he does win with a bit of the skullduggery, of course. Skullduggery. Uh, so that was the match. SCU versus LIJ versus the Hung Bucks. This was the big main event three-way tag team match. Uh, this is everything you would expect with a match involving the Hung Bucks and SCU. Very good stuff here. Uh, Evil comes out and he's got his lasers and his flashy lights. This is something I noted because one thing I'm glad that Evil isn't doing anymore is the fucking Halloween smoke show stuff when he comes to the <laughs> ring for New Japan. He's not doing the lasers. He's not doing the silly lights uh, for his G1 Climax matches anymore, at least uh, th- th- not that I've noticed anyway. Uh, so s- seeing him doing it here at this ROH show that was taped uh, weeks ago it made, me, made me wonder if, if somebody came up to him and, and said, Hey, man, during the G1, how about we uh, chill out the Halloween show? <laughs> right. And then the other no thing. More, no more giant scythe of uh, plastic well he is coming out with the big sickle but he at least he's adorned it with some more menacing looking chains and whatnot so at least uh, looks evil <laughs> yeah uh and then the other thing i noticed for this match is uh, uh hangman page got to come out to his the same music that he's uh, using in New Japan, we played it here on the show a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I'm just I'm digging the new Hangman <clears throat> Page music. So I thought that was nice here. Uh, Hangman Page and Kazarian brawl early in the match. Of course, uh, hearkening back to their feud that they've been having all year long. Everybody misses an elbow and everybody misses a drop kick. That's a spot that, that you'll see quite a bit in these uh, Young Bucks and SCU style matches. Uh, we had a rare miscommunication on a spot where uh, uh, Christopher Daniels was waiting to uh, hit an Arabian moonsault, but some guys were out of position, and he had to wait for them to kind of move into position to take the moonsault. So uh, a rare miscommunication, and I'm kind of surprised it didn't, it, uh, that it did not get edited out on the uh, TV cut here of this match. But uh, uh, they do an incredible... They do an incredible sequence where everybody hits a move. Abushi comes in and goes to miss somebody, but he misses and hits the referee by mistake. Um, uh, so uh, that leads to uh, Christopher Daniels getting a near fall on uh, uh, on Bushi, but Kaz has to grab the referee's hand and count himself because the referee can't see because of the mist. And so he's doing the counting, but then when Bushi kicks out, he stops counting, and, and the announcers are like, why not just keep counting? So Kazarian, in, in full-on babyface move, uh, they're uh, actually stopping the count when, uh, when the guy kicks out. So uh, SCU going full babyface here. And they were get they were over with the crowd uh, more and more here, uh, so that was a uh, part of the story here. And then the big part of the story was uh, Jay Briscoe coming in and hitting Christopher Daniels with a chair as Mark Briscoe distracts the new referee who uh, who comes out. Uh, um, 
Uh, so the, the story here is the Briscoes going after Daniels and Kazarian and uh, leading to them getting the uh, the lo- taking the loss after Bushi pins Daniels after that skullduggery there. So that's a, a continuing story, the Briscoes and uh, Kazarian and Daniels, uh, as well as the Page and Kazarian uh, feud kind of continuing to carry on in the match a little bit uh, as well, too. So. Next week on Ring of Honor TV, we're going to get uh, Bully Ray, Punishment Martinez, and Shane Taylor versus Cheeseburger Flip Gordon and Josh the Goods Woods. Uh, so I'll look forward to that one. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm digging, I'm, again, I'm digging the, the Flip Bully Ray kind of side of that story there. Uh, I, I need, to, I need some closure on that feud. So I need, let, let's get, let's have Flip get a pin on Bully Ray or something like that. That would be, Fine there, and also we'll, let's look for uh, some possible interaction between the new number one contender for the U.S. T- or for the TV title, Chris Sabin, and uh, Punishment Martinez uh, as well in that one possibility. Uh, then we have a four corner survival number one contenders match for the uh, women's championship. Uh, Tennille Dashwood versus Karen Q, who's in the May Young Classic, versus Madison Rain, who's in the May Young Classic, versus Kelly Klein. So a four way to determine the number one contender. Uh, depending on how they do that, that could be a pretty good match. I'm kind of looking forward to that one. Yeah, it'll be fun. And then the Briscoes are going to take on the Bouncers next week. The Beer City Bruiser and Brian Malonis will look for a Briscoes victory there. Although non-title match, so you could have the Bouncers get a fluke or skullduggery win and then bring that match back on the, one of the Honor Club shows at uh, Honor Reunited next weekend uh, as well. So some potential story-building stuff. So we'll look forward to next week's TV and as well. Although yeah, yeah. although it, it's, it's, it is interesting because this show will air next weekend at the same time that the honor uh, the uh, the honor united shows are going on so maybe they won't work a, a double angle there so i guess we'll i guess we'll have to wait and see uh because typically i don't see the uh, ring of honor tv show until the uh excuse me the uh, the monday after the weekend because i watch it on the uh ring of honor honor club app that's how i consume my Ring of Honor TV. So I will watch the TV show after the weekend shows next next weekend. Excuse me. So there is that. Any thoughts? Any other thoughts on the uh, Ring of Honor stuff there, Taco? No. Fun shit they've been doing. All right. couple more quick things before we get out of here. Last week I promised that uh, I, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been asking the listeners, I've been pleading with the listeners to go on to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast and give us a, give us a five star rating and leave a review because there were zero reviews for this show. And so I said, I said, if we get some reviews, I will read them on the show. Well, we got a review. Now we do have, yeah. we do have, we do have ratings. Thank you for the five star ratings. We got six ratings, but just the one review. So again, if you, if you uh, give your review, I will read it on the show. So this week, your, this review comes from uh, Fodal88. Probably not pronouncing that right, but here it is. What? No reviews yet? That's crazy. I love this podcast. It's so entertaining and talks about all the good wrestling that's going on during that week. It's funny and does not mention the Fed, WWE, which is great. So thank you very much for that review. So get your reviews in and get them read here on the show. Let's get out of here. Let's do that Kojima tweet. Now it's time for the Satoshi Kojima Tweet of the Week. You know, Kojima not tweeting much in English lately. I had to go, I went all the way back to last week's English tweet and then, Ooh. and then, uh, decided to, uh, go back forward and, and th- this was the best one I could find from the last week. So not, not a translated tweet, but it's just a link to an Instagram video of him working out. So he's continuing to make his recovery. He's back in the gym and this week's tweet simply says, hashtag workout, hashtag arm, hashtag NJPW, Hashtag Satoshi Kojima. So, not the best, yeah. not the best <laughs> tweet from Kojima, but you can follow him. Tweets in English once in a while at cozy underscore lariat. So, 
Follow this show at Strong Honor. Follow me at Tommy Stryker, spell Stryker with a Y. Check out our other podcast at BPW Podcast. We're not going to do one of those this week. Joe is out at the Cat Video Festival. Yes, Joe is at a Cat Video Festival. Maybe that's why he only has 16 predictions correct in his G1 prediction <laughs> bracket. Uh, Taco, where can people find you? Uh, ooh. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> At H G R E V T. Man, you got me off throwing off. <laughs> <laughs> follow me on Twitter at H G R E V Taco. And follow Joe and his horrible predictions at Joe B P W P. That's Joe Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. And then make sure to go to stronghonor.com or bestprowrestlingpodcast.com for those G1 recommended matches. Hit the menu button there. Also, sltdwrestling.com for some other podcasts there. Lots of great fan articles, a predictions league, a, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, I uh, can't think of the other one, a uh, fantasy league. Uh, and that's fantasy. WWE related stuff there. But uh, check those guys out, sltdwrestling.com, as well as you can find these podcasts there as well. That's it. I'm out of here. Tommy Stryker. Bye. Peace. NGPWGI Climax. It's amazing. You mad. Skullduggery. Professional wrestling is a fight.